Hello guys and welcome back to another Applied Logistics 2 video. It's been quite a while. So I was asked some um, in a YouTube comment to revisit the large ME controller design video and uh, uh, so we were able to solve the problem but I thought I'd go through how to make a base um, or uh, kind of base around a uh, central ME controller of a certain size and how to connect different rooms, how to set up auto crafting and, and everything. Storage, Every, yeah, you know, everything that a real network needs. So I have all these already drawn out how I want it to be. These are corridors uh, for cabling and all of these are are basically rooms and in, in a real base perhaps you should have a couple of floors or a couple of blocks up and then have the the main floor up here somewhere so all of these attach from uh, from the bottom so that's just a suggestion so let's uh, let's start with building the controller and parts of this video will be sped up uh, to save some time and so we can focus on how it works Okay, that's the, that's the controller that we'll have and I have it three blocks up so we can have, uh, so we can reach everything from below. You don't need to have it that high, of course. So, uh, tunnels. This is based on tunnels and you don't need to place down all of them at the same time. Uh, there are different ways to do this. You can either set everything down and then program them when you need them uh, or just like I do well like I do now or that you just place one more tunnel each time you need a new channel but doing like this actually getting a bit of lag here will give you 72 sides uh, I don't recall the exact amount of channels but that's how many you can have at at maximum and we need somewhere to to power it so we can set the final tunnel down there and we need an energy cell and this will get the yes let's, let's place it there and let's see do we have some glass cable ME glass cable fluix and quartz fiber. Great. Like that. So now you can see it's up and running. We have 2000 channels or more and uh, now let's try to connect them. And I use something called or something I call P2P network yeah, P2P networks, uh, and we have a P2P network controller in each direction. You don't need to have four of them. You can have a bit less. You can combine them, but I just want to make things very easy for us for this video, like that. And then if we take a look at the smart cabling, this is how we want to set things up. One dense here. And then all of these eight will be connected like that. And we need power. So that means, uh, how should we do it? Like that. Yeah, that works. As long as you have the quartz fiber in between, then this one will not be connected to, to this controller because that will break it totally. If you look like this, everything would be red and it won't work. You really need to separate them and they will be happy. All right. I don't think this is the best spot for it. Let's move it a bit to the side like that. And like that. 
that, that's okay. So now we have the the purple one and we also want some other color. Cyan perhaps. And those are four. And actually I'll skip the top and bottom uh, because it's it's a bit annoying. We don't really need them for the demonstration, but perhaps I can do like this. Yeah, I think that's fine. So let me hook a few sides up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I ended up with all sides except for the bottom side, which I only used four of. So there are eight more to fill. Otherwise, I think I covered the entire cube. So we have 16 channels going over here and 16 here and and so on. So 16 channels times 32 in each direction with eight spare that you can well connect to either one. All right, so next step is to do the the bone network of, uh, of dense cable. So remember then that this one can contain 16 channels, which means we can, if we connect, no need to have dense all the way, like this. We have 32 channels going into each room. So that's only four, we have 12 left, we can expand this with lots of room so we can have two of these going to each room or whatever we want to do it depends on how many we want but 32 channels is actually quite a lot so i don't think think this is a big problem so let's begin here say so if we take a chest and we can place a chest right about here's a good place and here's a good place and so on and, and doing this, you don't have to do this, but I think it's an interesting way of doing it. Because now we want to program the tunnels that we have here to correspond to one tunnel over there. So four of these. And as you can see in the tooltip it in the top left, it is online, so it has power. Everything is working, but it's unlinked. Uh, apparently, if I mean this is the uh, the one probe tooltip, I think. So this will give you an, a some information that you perhaps won't have in all packs. But if we take our memory card, go away, and we wanna connect them together. If we shift right click here, did you see that it changed color from this blank white into this, well, some checkered pattern of, of some type. And if you take a look at this, it says frequency 3D 6C. And the tooltip on this one says the same thing. And now we go over here and we just right click here. This is a common mistake that people do, and it's not very obvious. If you haven't seen the tutorial or read about it, it's not very easy to, to remember this. So this 3D6C, well, I'll keep it in this chest. You don't have to do this. You can totally clear it if we take, if I take a new one, and we sell it to something, shift right click, it will say D5, 5D. And we do like that. So this is online, linked and everything. We can shift right click in, the, in there and it will clear it totally. But that means if we tear this one down for, some, for any reason, we need to break things and we put things back. I don't have any channel because I don't think it will save it, right? If I shift right click, nope, they stacked so they are blank. 
So in this case, where I have the memory card, I can just pick it out, right click and then put it back. So let's save it here and it will, I know that this node is dedicated to that one. And that one is, the, it has one corresponding over there. But on this side, I don't have, I, I didn't keep it. So I need to go over here and I need to find some channel or some tunnel that is not used. And I can see this one is easy because I know it's broken, but when you have 20 of them programmed, how will you remember which one was going here? Well, of course you can go over here and you can check 3D6C and you can check here. All right, this is that's taken and go to the next one and go and find it. And I don't think that's a very good approach. So let's shift right click here again. This one will maintain D55D. And this is now D55D again. And we can go over here and click. And this time I'll store it in the chest. You can do either method that you want, but that, that's my preferred way because that's, that makes it easy to remember. When you have a small base, it doesn't really matter, but when they are this big and probably your base will be much, much larger than this, um, it can be a good approach. Another approach can actually be to if you place a chest over here again, uh, like that, we can take memory cards and duplicate them. They are not extremely expensive cold iron calculation, which is uh, pure service. Not extremely expensive, but if you have a controller with, like this one with over 70 P2P tunnels, you need to craft 70 of them. It's, when you're mid game, it's not a problem, but in the very beginning, it might be quite boring and tedious to, to craft all those. But here's what you can do. You can shift right click and put it in and shift right click and put it in. Shift right click and put it in and so on. Eventually you will have 12 or yeah, 16, I said, because we have 16 channels here. So you will have 16 memory cards in here and they all correspond to one side each, right? Or one tunnel each, one side of the controller. And then when you connect things together, well, let's go over here. I know I missed one. Like that, and we take a new tunnel here, and we take a new tunnel here. Well, I can just run over here, take my memory card, click it, 5D2C, perfect. And then I put it away here. Doing that, I know that all of these I have here, all the 15 I have left now, they are available on this side for this controller. Remember that these ones will not work in, in this network because this network has no connection to this side. If you, do, if you want to have that, of course, you can connect, uh, you can have a, a con larger controller and connect, perhaps you don't need that, uh, and connect all the 72 channels into one ME controller and then distribute them from there. Of course, possible. This is perhaps a bit more, yeah, a bit easier, I guess. And then I can take the next one, go over here. All right, and that one is unlinked and we'll put it here and place it in here. Okay, so I'll do this for a few more and then I'll be uh, right back and we'll wrap things up with all the machines and crafting and stuff. All right, so now we have all of these chests have a few, I did eight per side. So uh, we used one and so on. So now it's time to connect things together. And uh, we have a controller, we have channels, we have output. And um, I think I put my crafting or my storage over here. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Like that. And they should be connected, right? Oh. Perhaps I need to go and get one of those. Put it away and now we can see four channels here and four channels here. Very good. So now I did the exact same mistake that I know that many other have <laughs> done already. So th that's fun. And that gives us 16 so we can have just as many more. I will not fill all these, of course. Okay, something like that. Then this one is totally filled up. Um, so that's good. Now we can take a few storage cells and I, of course I will not fill all of them. That's good enough for now. And uh, let's go over to somewhere else and perhaps we have this one as our... This is linked already. Good, we have it. Good. And let's say this is our main main room uh, where we have a crafting terminal and pattern terminal. I like to have them close by. Take some blank patterns that let's say we have crafted them already. And we can take some wood. Lots of wood. Okay. So that's, that is now over here and you can see 88 bytes used, so it's working just fine. And now if we set up a crafting recipe, something like that in code pattern, well, where do we want that pattern to go? And perhaps we want some wool. And we search for a bed and we need some planks. Sorry. Like that. Encode pattern, perfect. So now we have we have two patterns, one to make planks and one to make beds, but we can't make anything. We need to put up some auto crafting somewhere. So let's do that over here. So this would be our crafting room. Uh, let's say we have, we need an interface and we need a molecular assembler, they are called. Like that, so we can reach all of them. Like that, and we can put, stack them up and this will Take care of lots of crafting. We can have another one on this side. I think this is a fun way to make all the crafting and we can put it just into any one we want. So here's our crafting room. We can have the machines with interfaces. We can have, you, this is probably where most of uh, all different rooms with different types of crafting and you have interfaces to connect to them, import, export buses and so on. That will take up most of your network, I guess. So this is our auto crafting room, but we need somewhere to, uh, something to think about it. Something that makes them craft. So let's take a memory card. These ones are linked already, but I want to be down here. Loaded device, save it. Great. And let's go over here and set a crafting storage. Let's take a 4K and we have co processing like that. We can have just a simple one. We can have 
a big machine with that I think you can have a monitor crafting monitor they are called like that I think that should work we have three different ones so now we can go to our room where we had the terminals so now if we want to craft the white bed let's craft 10 of them so you can see we have eight but we need to craft and we need to craft and our crafting cpu is automatic the storage here is this is the big one coprocessors and so on and let's start and here are our beds yeah they don't stack right so that's how simple it is to get everything running and when you do it like this you have to expand it but keep track of the channels as a most common problem that you run into um, and i hope this helps someone at least um, even though i made videos of it before i think it's a good uh, so a good opportunity for me to catch up and also see that the color thing has a, did not exist back in the days, I think. So that makes it much easier. All right. If you have any questions on this topic, you know where to leave them. And I have, of course, lots of videos on this subject from, uh, from way back. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. And bye-bye.